Hello and welcome to Dialogue. Leaders of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization have uh, wrapped up their final day of meetings in Astana, Kazakhstan. The SCO is the world's largest regional organization with a focus on security, trade, and cooperation in Central Asia and beyond. What issues were high on the agenda at the two-day summit? What to expect as China is to host the gathering next year? And how can SCO play a big role in security and development? Join us for our discussion today live from Beijing. I'm Xu Qinduo. Joining me today are Dr. Zhao Hai, Director of International Political Studies, National Institute for Global Strategy, Juma Odbaev, a former Prime Minister of the Kyrgyz Republic, and Professor Saeed Mohamed Morandi from University of Tehran. Welcome to Dialogue. So, uh, Professor Otobayev, I'll start with you probably. The theme of this year's uh, uh, SCO summit was, you know, strengthening a multilateral dialogue, the pursuit of a sustainable peace and development. Uh, tell us, what's your takeaway? What, what are the major highlights of the summit? Uh, yes, thank you very much for my invitation to your program. Uh, multilateralism is a very important element of the current world. Our world is not getting safer. So countries who are really willing to make our planet a safer place to live have to do everything to stabilize the world. One of the examples which Shanghai Cooperation Organization is showing is attempt to bring peace, prosperity and future development in it seems like we have a connection yeah, glitch there. Uh, Professor Morandi, um, you know, based on your analysis, your observation, so what, what is the message uh, from this summit uh, to the outside world? It is an important summit. It is uh, coming at a time of great significance as your previous guest pointed out the world is going is becoming increasingly unstable we see the war in europe the genocide in palestine the rising tensions uh, that the americans are bringing about uh, over taiwan so uh, and there are other issues as well so it is important for uh, countries in asia to come together to uh, build up their relationships. The networking among uh, these leaders is going to be very important for the future growth of the region, for the uh, stability of the region. And of course, Asia is on the rise. Uh, the global economy has moved away from the West. It has gone to Asia. And uh, Asian countries have to be able to manage this situation. And, and in order to improve uh, this uh, rising ec economy in Asia, the connectivity between the different countries has to increase. We see the Belt and Road Initiative progressing. We see the North-South Corridor progressing. Central Asia it used to be a series of countries which were called landlocked countries. But now, because of the uh, increasing the, the role of the new technologies, railways, roads, roads there they be, have become central to uh, trade across this continent. Uh, so Iran, uh, the, the Middle East or the or West Asia is connected to China through Central Asian countries. Iran's connection to Russia uh, goes partially through Central Asian countries. And therefore, it is very appropriate at this time for the talks to be held in Astana. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Zhao Hai, we know that previously the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, you know, it came into being from the Shanghai Five, so-called at that time, uh, as the name suggested, uh, you know, there, there were five of them. And then it was expanded into SCO uh, in 2001. 23 years, uh, you know, past, we have this uh, now, basically, with the inclusion of Belarus at this summit, you have 10 members, you know, two observer states, and also you have uh, 14 dialogue partners. Uh, 
what uh, is uh, so attractive with SCO to countries uh, in, partic in particular with, with, uh, in the Euro Asia region? Well, uh, well, first of all, I think you mentioned the history of SCO. That's important because SCO is growing uh, along with the development of history, the changing of world order, uh, and the changing of global landscape. I think that's very important. So we started with Shanghai Five, which is mainly focused on counterterrorism and anti-separatism uh, and uh, the security issues of uh, China's western borders and Central Asia. And then I think the turning point is 2001, uh, when the United States is focused on counterterrorism, but the world is uh, focused on developing it, their economies and China joined WTO and many countries want peace and development. So that's why uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization established and more and more turned itself into, uh, you know, paying attention to economic cooperation and trade and investments and, and many other areas. And now I think we're facing another transformation of Shanghai Cooperation Organization because of geopolitical pressure, because of changing international order. And now I think multilateralism and particularly the attractiveness of Shanghai Cooperation uh, Organization that is based on mutual respect and peace and focused on peace and development and also focused on Central Asia's internal and external relations throughout Eurasia continent. So at this point, I think it's very important that uh, all the member states get together and discuss and lay out the future of the Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization, the structure, the mechanism, uh, and what's uh, for them for the next stage and how could they get together to play a bigger role on the world stage and voice uh, 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 of their own uh, national and regional interest and also promoting uh, global peace and development around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Morandi, you know, if you look at the, um, you know, the core, let's say, the spirit of the principles of uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, many people refer to the Shanghai spirit, um, you know, which has been there for decades. Uh, basically, it includes, you know, mutual trust, as John had mentioned earlier, you know, mutual benefit, equality, consultation, respect for diversity of civilizations and the pursuit of a common development. Uh, if you look at these words, it sounds a bit abstract, uh, but the good things like, uh, the, I mean, it is well followed by the members of SCO and well recognized by, I would say, members and also dialogue partners, observer states, uh, you know, in order to be part of this big family. And uh, at the end of the summit, uh, it approved a documents which stressed again about equality. Basically, every member of SCO is being equal in terms of decision making. That, I would say, makes it uh, pretty different from other existing organizations, uh, Professor Morandi. Yes, when we look at uh, international bodies, uh, we see that traditionally the United States and the Europeans have dominated them. And even in Western bodies, we see that the United States dominates over its Western partners. But what we see in organizations like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or BRICS for that matter, uh, is a, a, or organizations where there are no hierarchy, where, where there's no hierarchy. And multilateral cooperation is able to be pushed forward much more easily. And the countries, all of the countries involved, recognize that uh, the best form uh, for a better future for a strengthening of the Asian economy is for everyone to be engaged alongside one another. So I think that ironically, the West, which constantly speaks about democracy, there the global institutions are controlled by them. Their own regional institutions are controlled by the Americans. But in, in the case of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, which is, as you pointed out, the, the largest regional organization in the world, and BRICS, which has uh, a, a global reach, uh, these bodies are democratic. And uh, some countries have large populations, some have small populations, some are big in size, some are small in size, but they all sit at the table and they're all deciding together because uh, they're... Uh, successful uh, negotiations and agreements benefits all of them equally.
Mm -hmm. uh, well, Joe Hai, of course, one of the highlights of this year's summit uh, is the admission of the Republic of Belarus you know, as the uh, organization's 10th member. Uh, so tell us uh, what uh, will, you know, um, the president of Belarus, uh, uh, Lukashenko, you know, has uh, emphasized the significance of his country's uh, being included in the organization, saying, you know, uh, joining uh, SEO uh, is really important for Belarus. What does this mean? What does this admission mean, you know, by uh, becoming a part of SEO? Uh, you know, as we know, there are a, a number of uh, candidate states uh, right now waiting to join uh, SCO and there are other many other states um, express the uh, will to in, you know join SCO in the future and right now I think uh, Belarus uh, is meeting the standard of the member states and it's uh, it has a very strong will to join and right now Russia is supporting Belarus to be a formal member of SCO I think uh, you know, as uh, Belarus joining uh, SEO is mutually beneficial because, on the one hand, um, you know, SEO is ex expanding its connections east and west uh, on both sides because, as we know, Central Asia is landlocked. And in order to have a better connection uh, and play a bigger role in terms of trade, investment, and other development opportunities, uh, it, it needed to stress uh, to stress it, its own connection to the east side, south side, and, and west side. And Belarus now is on the uh, land railroad connecting uh, East Asia and Euro Asia. So now Belarus is part of SCL, so making it easier uh, to play a bigger role in the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And now it can be a decision-making member uh, itself can attract more investment from the member states, dialogue uh, partners, and I think it will create more opportunities uh, for Belarus to develop itself. Mm -hmm. And again, the second part, of course, is about security. Now Belarus is facing more and more uh, complicated uh, security environments in that part of the world, um, and I think uh, SCO can provide a better backing for Belarus uh, to protect its sovereignty and territory integrity. Mm -hmm. well, uh, speak of uh, security, uh, Mr. Otterbayev, of course, you know, one set of security is domestic, uh, let's say, you know, as SEO's original uh, you know, mission is really to fight this terrorism, this uh, separatism and this extremism. And, you know, you know, many people would have thought, yeah, they have made a lot of progress. And you see there's um, uh, over the past years um, a few uh, instances of, of terror attacks. Uh, but in this year, we do see like what happened in Russia, you know, in the concert hall, more than 145 people killed. And recently, uh, you know, and, you know, another group of people were killed by, uh, by terror uh, attacks uh, in another republic inside Russia. So can we say, you know, probably uh, one of the top item for cooperation among ICU members will remain this uh, security cooperation? Uh, <coughs> yeah, absolutely right. The terrorism, extremism, they don't have borders. That is a key element of understanding from members of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Indeed, terroristic acts in Russia in the Russian Republic of Dagestan, as well as in Pakistan, when a few Chinese constructors were killed by terrorists, clearly indicate there's a long way to go in order to stabilize our countries. That is why joint efforts of all countries involved, only joint efforts, could be efficient. Because these days, for example, the tragedy in Kroko City in, in Russia, in Moscow, indicated that terroristic attacks was orchestrated from abroad. So all the de uh, decisions were made abroad and unfortunately it was not prevented because of lack of uh, understanding how they act. So now all our countries decided to even deeper relationships in sphere of security. Yeah, And then with current development of digital economy, of super communication, this can be achieved. So it's maybe that Shanghai Cooperation Organization will be one of the global unions which will be showing a truly international collaboration in terms of real security for the member states. And it means that more countries will be willing to uh, participate in our organization. What I know that um, 
what is important that all of us must do everything to try to stabilize situation in our another neighbor, which is Afghanistan. And what I like very much that most of our members decided to move in Afghanistan in terms of cooperation with this country. So that that country will not be source of terrorism, extremism, etc., but will be a real good neighbor which will be cooperating with us in all aspects of cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ardabayev, you know, let's expand a little bit further, you know, in terms of security, of course, domestically, you want to stability you know, without any terror attack or separatist or this, uh, you know, extremist. Uh, but then, you know, globally, among nations, sometimes uh, territorial integrity, sovereignty. And now, of course, if you look at the global landscape, there's, um, you know, people with this, let's say, you know, a Cold War mentality or pushing for a new Cold War, um, basically against China, against Russia here. Uh, and then that creates another set of, uh, of, of challenge in terms of security. Some people would compare SCO as a counterbalance, a counterpoint against NATO, uh, a military organization, of course, mostly consists of uh, Western nations. Uh, how, how do you respond to that kind of, uh, say, you know, mentality? Oh, uh, here uh, we come, a new uh, Cold War, and now this camp is against that camp. Yeah. Uh, these days, uh, the word containment is very popular in the West. I, I don't understand this uh, idea. What does it mean if somebody were to contain? Because the world is getting small, the world is getting interconnected. If China, Russia, others will be weaker, who will win? Not the world. What is important that the world should compete Different countries should compete in the economic area with each other and be better because competition is everything in terms of, of improvement of life of people. Yeah? Cooperation, number two. It is important that we will be competing, but we'll be cooperating. And Shanghai Cooperation Organization and its enlargement, potential enlargement, because it's becoming very attractive element, not only in security cooperation, but also in terms of uh, economic cooperation, would show excellent example. And for, not for us in Central Asia, this is especially important because, as some of you already mentioned, we are landlocked. We need to be uh, good with neighbors. We can't, can't, we can't jump into the sea and go to other neighbor. We must be friendly to everybody. So that is interesting uh, pot potential of um, development of Shanghai Cooperation Organization is that it's accepting to its members as more landlocked countries. For example, Belarus attending, becoming member, then maybe Afghanistan, Mongolia will be the next. So in that respect, enlargement of this organization in a huge Eurasian continent and beyond, because for instance, Arabic countries uh, very much interested. And since Iran is bordering Arab world, it's possible that Arabic country, for example, members of Gulf Cooperation Organization would be joining it within short. So it will be good way on how to make our world better. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Professor Morandi, as uh, Mr. Autobayev has said, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, if you look, look at the latest document from the summit, uh, it also stresses, uh, you know, the, the, the organization, SCO, is not targeting at any uh, other country or organization. It is open and it is, uh, it is for cooperation. It is for uh, basically, you know, the peace and stability and development inside of this organization. Um, but, but still, you do have this uh, problem of, uh, you know, it's, it's a global uh, <laughs> situation beyond this region, beyond this group, right? Yes, and I think uh, as the Western Empire declines, it is becoming in certain ways more irrational and angry and unaccepting of a new globe, uh, a new global order where we have uh different multiple centers of power it's a multipolar world that we are entering and uh, it's very difficult for the united states and its allies to accept that when for a, a brief period of time at least they were calling the shots uh, but uh, it's for to their own benefit to 
change their mentality because ultimately, as your previous guest rightly pointed out, it's through a healthy competition that the world can achieve uh, better results and improve the lives of citizens across the world. But um, uh, this sort of the competition that the Americans and the Europeans seem to be alluding to, where they sanction countries or they sanction businesses that seem to be doing well or countries that seem to be growing, they sanction them so that they can maintain the uh, top global position, the West meaning, uh, that, that sort of mentality is, is a threat to everyone. And one of the benefits of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and BRICS as well, because both of these are complement one another, and both of these are very important organizations. Uh, the, I think the importance of the, these two organizations is that they're not dominated by the West. They're not dominated by anyone. They are a, a groups of countries that have come together that want to find ways to cooperate, to build their infrastructure, to build their societies, to build up in, in interconnectivity, uh, and uh, to pool their resources. And uh, this is to the benefit of all these countries. And they want to create an environment where the West can no longer uh, in, uh, hold countries back. They cannot sanction Chinese companies simply because these ch companies are more successful than American companies. They cannot sanction Iranian oil or Russian oil simply because they want to dominate uh, Europe mm -hmm. or West Asia and they don't and they want Russia and Iran to be weak. So these organ and also, as you were earlier pointing out, the issue of security alongside e the economy, they come together. And it's not, I think, a coincidence that the terror attacks that we're seeing by these extremist groups are being carried out in, in Shanghai Cooperation Organization countries, in Russia, in Pakistan, and in Iran, we had two major attacks. That's All true. of them uh, extremist groups that have a history of working with uh, Western powers. So. Uh, these countries, when they come together, not only do they help create security across Asia, and of course, Central Asia is key to the security of all of Asia because it's there, it's in the middle. And therefore, Afghanistan, as pointed out earlier, is also very important to, for us to be able mm -hmm. to maintain its stability. If that security is maintained, if economic growth continues and interconnectivity continues, then I think the future of Asia is very bright. And I think ultimately Western countries will have to conclude that cooperation is better than confrontation. Yeah, uh, speak of that, uh, uh, Zhao uh, of course, you know, uh, you, Professor Morandi mentioned about the threat of that kind of uh, particular mentality, you know, basically, uh, you know, somehow they have to dominate the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, even in the economic sphere, you do have this kind of practice. For example, uh, in, in his speech, President Xi Jinping mentioned, you know, he not only warned about this new Cold War mentality, but also uh, this uh, practice of, uh, you know, a small yard, high fences, um, you know, basically robbing um, here specifically the Chinese of, uh, you know, tech and innovation. Uh, you know, new uh, ac access to, you know, high technology uh, or products there. But also, you know, largely it is uh, a way basically to say no to the developing country, to the rising developing world. Uh, somehow you are not allowed to be on a par with us, not to mention, you know, surpassing us. I mean, how justifiable is Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah, I think what separates SEO and Shanghai spirit uh, with other, you know, Western alliances, that uh, Western alliance is based on a zero-sum mentality, and uh, SEO and BRICS are based on mutually beneficial win-win mentality and mutually inclusive, accepting each other's culture, uh, political institutions, and diversity, embracing those diversity. I think that's that's a fundamental difference. And right now, we're witnessing. Uh, this hierarchical Western organizations trying to reimposing their colonial imperial uh, will and the dominance across the world and trying to reinforce that order. And uh, I think uh, SEO and other uh, developing countries, Global South, are uniting uh, to fight against that that uh, uh, you know ambition and trying to establish a more equitable and more inclusive and more sustainable peace and development world. Uh, and, and you know establishing a new world order that can benefit all the countries.
And right now, looking at uh, what SEO has uh, achieved over the, the past quarter of century, there are interconnecting connections uh, building among those countries, and those countries together grow 13 times uh, in the in the last uh, 23 years uh, in terms of GDP, and also. Um, uh, other than trade and investment, there's also, uh, you know, energy cooperation and uh, security cooperation that maintain and ensure that the region maintain, remain uh, stable and grow together. And Afghanistan, of course, after mm -hmm. the disastrous withdrawal of the United States, is now uh, becoming a better, uh, you know, economically and trying to be a normal state. Uh, hopefully, SEO, uh, you know, reviving the contact group between SEO and Afghanistan will help that country to grow even better. Mm -hmm. So I think moving forward is very important uh, to show the world the spirit, Shanghai spirit, and then to call upon other global South countries to follow the flag to follow the standard and, uh, you know, to try to aspire to a better world. Right. Um, and Mr. Ardubayev, you know, China is to take over the rotating presidency next year uh, for SCO. At the same time, you know, you do hear some of the, let's say, let's call it criticism. I think they have a point probably in the sense uh, some, some would say, you know, quote here, you know, SCO is a place for conversation rather than a platform where collective decisions are made, implemented and have an impact. Uh, in terms of uh, reforming the SEO to make it more visible, probably to make it more uh, solid, more impactful, uh, any kind of reforming measures we expect maybe under the Chinese presidency? Uh, it's, uh, Chinese presidency is very important. China is the biggest economically uh, in the bloc. Uh, they can provide a lot of ideas. They can provide resources uh, to achieve those ideas. What we know that uh, China is very advanced in terms of uh, controlling uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the actions against terrorism yeah. and extremism. So it's very advanced, uh, digitally country. I, I think that in that respect, we can really look into the Chinese uh, chairmanship as uh, a application of new technology to control security against extremism and terrorism. Mm -hmm. That is important because these days it can be done. And in that respect, uh, Chinese uh, successes in modernization and high quality development can bring fruits to securing uh, security in Eurasia. Mm -hmm. So all of us really looking forward for China's uh, chairmanship and organization, China's leadership. Yes, what Mr. To Mr. Mr. Aldebayev, you know, like uh, what, what, you know, we talked about security. What about uh, economic uh, cooperation? Um, are we expecting any probably firm moves to strengthen absolutely. Yeah, economic absolutely. cooperation, economic development? Yes, absolutely. Uh, economic cooperation is a critical element of uh, SEOs. Especially, I would underline the transport, digital and energy connectivity between our countries. It's moving on very, very quickly. Recently, on 6th of June, China, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan signed a special uh, agreement on built railroad between uh, China, Kyrgyzstan to Uzbekistan, further to Caspian Sea, uh, uh, South Caucasus and Turkey and Europe. It will be shortest way uh, between China, Asia and Europe. And in that respect, including South uh, North, line between Russia, Azerbaijan, Iran, further to uh, India Ocean would uh, again so bring Central Asia to the old, the yes. old Silk Road we, we have reality. To it will be again stop south there. Uh, of Central Asian yeah. continent. Uh, and this, uh, more connectivity uh, is always good uh, to uh, economic growth exactly. there. On that note, we come to the end for today's show. Many thanks to our guests. You can also watch us on the CGTN app on YouTube. I'm Xu Xinduo. Thank you for being with us. See you next time.